Thank you for coming with such an enormous amount of audience, and I hope you also get used to my Slavic accent. All right, the church first. My early memories of the church, it was in ex-Yugoslavia. I was born in 1946, and my both parents was a Tito partisans and a communist. And my grandmother, she was highly religious and Orthodox Serbian and absolutely hated communism altogether. And I was given to my grandmother till I was six years old, and every single day I was in the church. It was a different church, much colder. This is so warm church. We, our church didn't have that much heating like this one. And, uh, and I remember these days that I actually was sitting in the church and I noticed that always when you come in, I don't know, I didn't see here, but you have this little, little kind of marble thing that with water, you, you put your finger and you cross yourself. And I had this secret plan when I was six. I was thinking if I put a little chair and stand up and drink all this water, I will get holy, absolutely holy. So I did, but I only got sick. <laughs> and uh, another relation to the church is that in my family, there is also a saint, I mean, real saint. Uh, it's Patriarch Varnava, who actually um, was poisoned by the king in ex-Yugoslavia in 1936. But if using um, the unification of Orthodox and Catholic Church, and uh, the personal doctor of the king invited him with the two brothers to for lunch, and they put in the food crash diamonds, which is very fancy that those days. And he died from eternal bleeding in one month. And then he was proclaimed as a saint. So as you see, this is the enormous contradiction which creates my life and work as a performance artist. National heroes, saints, communism, religion, spirituality. But now I would like to tell you how everything began for me. So since very early age, I was painting everywhere. Everything I could find out, the walls, the floors, the family, just everything. And I was always jealous of Mozart because he started with a seven. But my first exhibition, I was 12. And when I was 14, you know, I asked my father, my biggest wish for the birthday, give me the oil painting to paint because I want to be a serious artist. And my father, oh, he was a soldier, he didn't know anything about art. So he invited one of his uh, ex-soldiers who become, you know, abstract painter and study in Paris to come and help. So he came and went to the shop and we bought lots of different things, all kinds of boxes and canvases. And he, this man gave me my first painting lesson. And this painting lesson was very important to me for the later on development, so I'm going to tell you about it. So I had a little room, which was my studio, 14 years old. So he cut the uh, pieces of canvas irregular, not stretching on any kind of frame, just irregular. Put on the floor, take one can with the glue, just spray over, then he put some cement over top of the glue, then he put some green pigment, red pigment, lots of yellow pigment, then he took and put gasoline all over the place, then he take a match, throw on this, and everything explodes. And he looked at me and he said, this is a sunset, and left. <laughs> so, if you think 14 years old and first painting lesson is impressive, <laughs> I stay for a long time watching, you know, the drying on this sunset and drying for weeks and weeks. And then when the, this whole thing dry, very carefully, I put with two nails against on the wall and left for the holidays with my parents. It was August. When I came back, the sun was hitting directly to this sunset, so the old glue melted and just fell down. And only what was left, it was just kind of dirt and a little bit ashes on the floor. And um, I didn't understand at that moment how important this lesson was. But much later, looking back to my career now, this was essential. Later on, I was very much influenced by Yves Klein, which is a wonderful uh, French artist. And he was you know, talking about process. Jackson Pollock talking about process. The process is even more important than the actual result itself. And uh, coming back later on and doing performance art, the process is everything. You know, on the end, there is no result, because performance art is the most immaterial, except the music, form of art ever. So the only what is left, actually, in the direct dialogue with the audience, it's the memory. 
So that little lesson really, it's kind of was based on my work. And then, you know, I start painting, still I was painting. I was painting clouds, I was painting my dreams, and I was painting lots of clouds. And I was 18, 19 in those days. And then I had all these very complicated ideas of clouds. Clouds were coming, clouds were there, black clouds, clouds were coming from the sky and hitting the bodies, the projection of the clouds, the black holes, and so on. And one day I was lying on the, on the grass and looking at the sky, just to study the clouds. It was only blue sky, there was no one cloud there. And uh, from nowhere came about 12 the ultrasonic aeroplanes, military, and start making these incredible drawings, you know, when they come and they make these drawings of white on the sky. And I look this drawing, and I look how the drawing disappear, and this blue sky again. And for me, that moment, it was some kind of spiritual revelation I remember I was like in a trance. I stood up, I said to myself, oh my God, but I don't need to go to studio and I don't need to make two-dimensional work anymore. I am free, I can do anything I want. I can use my body, I can use fire, water, air, earth, air, whatever I want and do the work. And that's how I actually discover that, um, you know, become performance artist. And the first time I made performance, the energy for me was so strong, so incredibly shaking my, my whole soul that I knew that I could not do anything else. And you know, for, another art, for an artist, when I was teaching, I teach a lot in, in the past, when I was teaching, I was always saying to my students, which is so important, is to know who you really are. First of all, you have to ask yourself, are you an artist? And how you know an artist? And you know, how you know an artist is same like you never question breathing. You can't question breathing. You have to breathe, otherwise you die. But if you wake up in the morning and you have this constantly the ideas to make something different again and again and again, you're pretty much an artist then. But it doesn't make you a great artist. You're just an artist. <laughs> great artist is an all another story. You have to be in fever. You have to be, you, you have to be obsessed. You have to be sacrificing everything else in your life and just doing this, what you're doing. That's really total being, getting inside. And then, you know, the, with performance artists, what is very important is when you perform, I mean, how you have to prepare yourself for performance. Uh, Brancusi, which was the great Romanian uh, sculptor, said once, which is so important, is not what are you doing. I mean, you can, you know, do whatever, paintings, video, I don't know, architecture, but what most important is from which state of mind you're doing what you're doing. State of mind is everything. That means that, you know, you have to kind of create charismatic state of mind and focus totally. And then the work comes in the best possible way. So in the past, I was reading uh, how the ancient artists prepared themselves to do the work, like say Renaissance. Cennini Roccenini was writing this text about preparation of, let's say, Michelangelo and Leonardo to make the, the big work of art. So he suggests this kind of preparation. Three months, don't eat meat before you start the work. Two months, stop drinking wine. One month, no sexual intercourse. And three weeks before, you put your right hand into the plaster, completely motionless. And the day you want to start the work, you break the plaster, you take your, your pencil or with your brush, and then you can make perfect circle. You're ready. And uh, in the past, if you talk about ancient culture, like you know, in China or Japan, people will go to the big top of the mountains and they will meditate and they will kind of confront themselves with something they call qi energy. And I developed my own system called cleaning the house. You know, we always clean the house. I mean, you know, we are talking about outside house. But the house really matters. And the most important house in your life is your own house. It's yourself. So, um, what I will do, I will go to nature. I'm mostly with, with, a, with a young artist, you know, which I was teaching, like all, everything between 20, uh, 25 will be the biggest group, 12 to 25. We will go five days, first without any food, but when I'm talking any food, I'm talking no food. I'm not talking juices, I'm talking just water, and that's it. And no talking, 
absolutely no any kind of verbal communication. And they're doing very difficult physical mental exercises. Like one will be, you go in the middle of the forest, oh, the, the condition of the weather should be the worse, or too cold or too hot, not in between. And, uh, and we all sleep together in the barn, wake up very early, sometimes four in the morning, six, you never actually know, because it's like, I will always surprise them with a different task every day. So we'll go in the middle of the forest with blindfold, and uh, you have to find a way home without seeing. Because an artist has to see with all body, like a blind man. You have to be sen sensitive. You have to see in the back of the, you have to like the side, you have to have the eyes on the back of, of, you, of, you, of your head. And uh, so that would be one exercise. And so many different ones. Basically, is to uh, focus on your perception, on your willpower, to see how you confront with the mental and physical limits, and so on and so on. So all this kind of stuff. Because you can't learn performance to do. You have it or you don't have it. It's kind of inherited, a genetic thing. But what you can learn is to, is to focus and to actually train your body for the really difficult task. Performance art in, in the early 70s, um, it was nobody territory. And for many, many years was nobody territory. It was a kind of alternative form of art. In the beginning, it was the same with photography and video. But now, video and photography is the mainstream art, but performance never. So now, I'm probably the only one left from my generation who still perform. And my task was, and my big dream, this is like 40 years of, of work, to really place performance in the, as a mainstream art form. And this is happening because this audience today actually proved that maybe is mainstream because otherwise why well, you come to listen to me? <laughs> so, uh, so many different things to say. You know, one other thing that I have to clarify, what is the difference between performance and theater? Because so many people kind of mix up these things. In the early time, it was very d big difference. Now it's not so much because so many elements of performance art enter to theater, enter to cinema, enter to video, enter to MTV, to fashion. So it's a kind of big mix. But in the early days, it was very simple. Theater is very simple. The knife is not the knife, and the blood is ketchup. In a, in a performance, blood is real, and ketchup is blood, and, and the ketchup is real blood. <laughs> So it's very clear, performance is not rehearsing, is not repeating, is the new for the audience, as for the performer doing it, and, um, and it's serious business. I don't say the theater is not, I just say it's different. And um, another thing which is so important to say, it's um, uh, what is art about, what, what, you know, what is the aim of an artist, and why, you know, the, what, why performance is such an important tool. Uh, I, if I think about hierarchy of art, and I think that art is not democratic in any way, I always believe that the music is the highest form of art. And because, just because of the nature of the music, of nature is such an immaterial, and goes to your body straight, doesn't need any object between. And then I really think it's subjective, of course we can argue on that, but it's subjective. Performance will be the second one. And in the beginning, when artists is insecure, and the young artist, in my case, I need so many props and so many things around. But the more you learn um, about that charismatic space, and the more you learn about energy, and how you can take energy of the audience, transform it, and give it back to her, the more you don't need anything. And basically, it's just pure presence. And this is why the, the, my last performance, which I done in MoMA, which actually lasts 736 hours, three months performing, every single day seven hours, every Friday 10 hours because the museum is open longer. Whether such, whether such a kind of um, effect on people, I was nothing. I had just a table and two chairs. And the last months I removed the table. It was not necessary. It was just two chairs. And now I'm really thinking of something even less, if it's possible, even less. But basically, it's so important um, in the performance to focus on presence because we always think about past, what happened, we think about future, which didn't happen, but the only reality we ever have is the present and, and that's the only thing we, we got in our lives and we always, this presence fleets 
And the performance is how to put audience and the performer in this moment here and now. And when you are in the moment here and now, the time don't exist. There's no time. In presence, time is not there. And then many things happen. Then is this profound experience of reality, of the, of, of the luminosity of the, of the human being. It's so many things. And uh, art has to have so many functions. You know, every piece of art has to have layers of meaning, have to be spiritual, political, have to predict future, have to disturb, have to ask questions, not necessarily answer them. And, um, that's, and really, and the most important of all, the art has to lift human spirit. That's, the, I think, the most important function ever. And then every, you know, the, every artist has to find which form he has to choose the best to express himself. And I see performance as a tool. Painting is a tool. Sculpture is a tool. You know, they are the tools. And some artists fit better the one tool than another. And mine was the performance. 